Hi, I'm Andre Kalgaru, founder of Narratix. For the past five years, I have been writing for publishing news covering the Audi Awards. For this edition, we decided to do something different and also record an English audio version to bring the content to more people. So stay with us to hear more about this year's edition. No event excites the prestigious and billion-dollar audiobook market in the United States more than the Audio Awards ceremony, which took place on March 4th in Los Angeles. Known as the Oscars of audiobooks, organized by the Audio Publishers Association, it occurs annually and holds significant importance for everyone involved or interested in this segment. The event consistently unveils a series of impactful trends that affect the entire industry. After all, the American audiobook market has seen double-digit growth for an impressive 11 consecutive years, making it the most coveted market in the world. Here we will analyze the winners of the main categories and also feature testimonials from some of the winners. But where do we stand in the market today? These are some of the facts that have been most discussed by industry insiders. The increasingly significant involvement of Spotify and audiobooks. This global audio giant, with over 213 million subscribers, has been taking continuous actions to become a decisive player. At last year's Frankfurt Book Fair, Spotify advertisements were scattered throughout various locations, highlighting the importance the company has placed on audiobooks. And this seems to be just the beginning. The growth of the Spanish language audio entertainment industry. This market nearly doubled in size within a year, reaching a growth rate of 75% according to a study by Javier Celaya from DosDosi.com. Not surprisingly, last month in Madrid, Spain, the Audio Day Parix took place an international gathering organized by Javier himself and the German Sanchez Rupieres Foundation, FGSR, focusing on Spanish audio trends and broader market tendencies. The advancement of artificial intelligence in the realm of spoken audio. Much has been unfolding in this landscape, from major players adopting AI for narrations, such as the Swedish Storytel, which recently launched its voice switcher in collaboration with Eleven Labs, offering five options of synthetic voices for audiobook narration, to the emergence of companies aiming to address specific processes in production, like audiobook proofreading, using AI. Conversely, voice artists worldwide are banding together and voicing concerns around issues to better regulate the use of artificial intelligence and synthetic voices, worried about how it may impact their work. Back to the ceremony. In this year, we had 27 categories, with the main novelty being the end of the categories for Best Male Narrator and Best Female Narrator, replaced by the categories Best Fiction Narrator and Best Nonfiction Narrator, without gender distinction. Let's move on to the winners of the main categories. Audiobook of the Year. The most prestigious award went to the fantastic Surrender, a memoir by Bono, the lead singer of U2, published by Penguin Random House. Surrender is not just any audiobook. It is a masterpiece of audio. Narrated by Bono himself, it featured a highly sophisticated production, including dozens of songs, many of them in exclusive versions and sound effects. In addition to Bono's excellent narration, of course, it offers an immersive experience. The drum beat crescendos in volume until we are spat out onto the station platform in Paddington, London, W2. This is it. The belly of the beast. It's a production that showcases some of the still relatively unexplored possibilities in audiobook production, increasingly blurring the boundaries between audiobooks, podcasts, and other forms of spoken audio. Why not use, in some cases, more exclusive and diverse content in the audiobook version and be more daring with sound design? We had a chance to talk with Penguin Random House Audio's SVP of Content Production, Dan Zit, about the audios. Dan, 
PRH Audio was the most awarded publisher this year at the Audio Awards, with seven awards, which is quite impressive. What are the main factors that make your productions stand out like this? Behind every audiobook is a talented, creative team that works with the author to bring the book to life. Whether it's performed by a single narrator or a cast of many voices, we take great care in finding the right sound for every single book we produce. This year's audio winners, from Best Fiction Narrator, Billy Buford Brown's reading of The Last Lifeboat, to Eunice Wong's narration of Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, which won in the mystery category, are wonderful examples of the magic that happens when the right voice is matched with a book. It sings. Bono's audiobook of the year, Surrender, is a testament to the immersive possibilities of the audiobook format, weaving together unforgettable storytelling from the author himself with snippets of more than 40 songs, sound effects, and archival audio to create an incredibly unique listening experience two years in the making. Best Fiction Narrator The highly acclaimed British voice artist Billy Fulford Brown took home the coveted trophy for her performance in The Last Lifeboat, also from Penguin Random House. With her captivating narration filled with nuances in the interpretations of various characters and intense emotional depth, it's surprising to learn that Billy began her professional career working at a private bank. Fortunate for listeners, she switched from the bank to her home studio. The quality of her narration in this work demonstrates the power of the human voice when talent and connection with the text are present. Alice can't breathe. The wind snatches her breath away, leaving her gasping for air as she half jumps, half stumbles into the lifeboat and falls face down against the boards. Best Nonfiction Narrator Winner of numerous Audis for audiobooks across various different segments, actor and narrator Dion Graham seems to shine even brighter in nonfiction. It's no coincidence that he received two Audis this year. In addition to Best Nonfiction Narrator for King, A Life, published by Macmillan Audio. He also won in the nonfiction category for Poverty by America from Penguin Random House. Dion has lent his voice to several other biographies, including those of Martin Luther King Jr. and Miles Davis. Nonfiction, contrary to what many may think, is a genre that is very difficult to narrate because, unlike fiction, which is rich in dialogue, characters, and possibilities for broader vocal modulations, here we have quotations and passages that need to sound appealing to listeners through pauses, subtle changes in intonation, and less abrupt but convincing shifts in intention. Español, Spanish language. This is what we can call a major production. The process of producing an audiobook with a single narrator is complex and delicate, but with 28 narrators, one for each character, the effort is enormous, especially considering that the audiobook has a duration of 18 hours, perhaps more than double the average, and is based on the classic text by Miguel de Cervantes. Penguin Random House has been bold in its productions and has received acclaim for it. With El Ingenioso Don Quixote de la Mancha, it was no different. ¡Qué gigantes! Dijo Sancho Panza. ¡Aquellos que allí ves! Respondió su amo. ¡De los brazos largos, que los suelen tener algunos de casi dos leguas! ¡Mire vuestra merced, que aquellos que allí se parecen no son gigantes, sino molinos de... Matias Fernandes, brand manager at Penguin Audio, also talked with us about this award. Hi, Matias. You and your team won the award for the best Spanish language audiobook, but it wasn't with a more traditional production. Instead, it was an almost 19 hour long audiobook, featuring 28 narrators. How was the process of putting together such a complex production, especially considering that it was based on the extremely important work of Miguel de Cervantes? Hi, my name is Matias Fernandez and I am the brand manager of Penguin Audio for the Spanish Audiobook Division. Uh, the truth is that with this message I am breaking a strong rule of our team, which is never to send low quality audio. Um, every piece we produce, whether audiobooks or marketing materials, we always focus on ensuring they sound with the highest possible quality. 
but today I'm away from the studio and I didn't want to miss out on participating. So please accept my apologies. Uh, we are incredibly thrilled and honored to have won the Best Spanish Audiobook Audio Award for the fourth time in a row. It, uh, we had three finalists this year in the category, which I think shows all the love and care that goes into our work. And in a way, we bring our books to our audio readers. And creating a dramatized production of such an iconic work as Don Quixote takes a lot of time and work, but is ultimately a labor of love for the text and the author. And we are very lucky to have a wonderful team of in-house talent and outside collaborators, directors, narrators, who share our love of books and are always willing to embark on a new adventure with us. Thank you. We have also spoken with Eric Black from Dreamscape Media regarding the award for young listeners. Otilla looked closely at the skull. You don't want it to catch you. No, whispered the skull. I don't. Will it come tonight? said Otilla. Hi, Eric. How important is it for Dreamscape Media to win an Audi? Hi, Andre. Well, it is quite an honor to have our book, The Skull, recognized as the best book of the year in this genre. It was a labor of love. We did a lot of uh, special things on, on this title, and to have that recognition is both humbling and validating. So we're very proud of what we created and couldn't be happier to receive the award. What made this co production so special to receive the award? As I mentioned, it was truly a labor of love. We pulled out all the stops for this. The producer, Andy Jones, had a vision when we read, you know, John Clausen's novel the first time. We realized it was special. His writing is somewhat offbeat, somewhat dark, especially when you consider uh, these books are made for children. We landed on Feruza Balk, who is an amazing actress, and really fit the tone and the style of this. She'd never recorded an audiobook before, and it was quite evident uh, when we heard her performance that she had zeroed right in on the tone and delivered just a fantastic, fantastic performance. In this title, we also did sound design, adding sound effects in select places as well as a custom soundtrack created by a local musician here in Toledo, Ohio, named Joel Roberts. He works with synthesizers and other unique instruments and created a soundtrack that really mirrored the tone of John's writing, uh, sometimes dark, sometimes spooky, a little offbeat. In the end, when we put all these components together, got a product that we are so proud of, well worth the time and effort, and really could not be happier with what we created. And again, just very, very humbled to have received the award. After closely analyzing the Audio Awards in recent years, we can say that exciting times are ahead of us. New production formats, artificial intelligence tools, new players, content innovation, all of these tend to build an even more vibrant ecosystem for the coming months and years. This program was offered by Narratix, a multi-language audio storytelling company that produces audiobooks, podcasts, and much more. Be sure to follow Narratix social media channels and feel free to reach out to discuss about audiobooks, audio, and books. Also, please follow Publish News, edition and sound design by Guilherme Barata, translation and proofing by Lavinia Vianini and Jeremy K. Mack, narrated by Andrea Calgaro and Jeremy K. Mack, and written by me. See you soon! <laughs>